All right, welcome back, folks. This is a part two of a carburetor cleaning job on a Storm Chaser generator, 5,500 watt. Uh, it's powered by a Briggs & Stratton engine. A uh, little disclaimer, I have already taken the carbure carburetor completely apart. I have cleaned it once thoroughly. Uh, we're just gonna go through the basic steps on what I did. We're not doing a rebuild because we're not replacing gaskets, O-rings, and uh, actual parts. We're just doing a cleaning with carb cleaner and compressed air. We're gonna start by removing the two bowl retaining screws. Pull them off, pull them out. Anyway. Um, tried to start the generator a couple weeks ago, wouldn't start. Suspected fuel, smelt bad, drain the tank, pull the carburetor out. There was gelatinized fuel in the bottom of the bowl. So I knew right away we had a fuel issue. Already checked for spark, it was good. So be careful when you're removing this stuff. You do have a couple O-rings and stuff. You have a seat down in the bottom of this hole here that can get blown out with compressed air if you're not careful. Um, also, you have your little O-ring seal. Be careful with it. So, on a carburetor, you have passageways for fuel, uh, passageways, venturis, whatever you want to call them all throughout the carburetor, like on this uh, engine side of the carburetor on the throat inside here, there's a small venturi. You really can't see it. It's really tiny. You'd have to spray it as best as you can. The nozzle won't fit in there. On the air cleaner side, on the choke side, you have three more ports here that you spray. Um, also clean the, the whole exterior of the carburetor as well before I actually even uh, start taking it apart. It gets all the debris and everything that's on it. Again, also clean this, your float, assembly how that works is as fuel begins to fill up inside this bowl the float rises because it floats and there's a it controls a needle valve and as the needle uh, secures to the seat and it shuts off flow to the carburetor and as the engine uses it the demand opens it'll begin filling up again but i'll take this apart real quick for you so you can see what i'm talking about very simple oh so anyway there's your needle, it's got a little rubber tip and it goes into that hole right there. And there's a seat in there that it sits into. And like I say, it just shuts the fuel off. Go ahead and put that back together. I have cleaned all that independently. Of course, it wasn't real bad off to begin with. But when you're doing one and you're taking it apart, it's always best to clean as much of that as you can because you never know where that gummed up fuel is settled. Okay, we're gonna set that out to the side. Rotate the camera for a minute. And again, I'm not gonna do this real aggressively. I've already did it, but you just kind of hit the, hit the ports and the passageways, venturis. And I told, I said before in another video, when you're using, doing this, wear safety glasses, because sometimes that stuff will kick back on you. Get that small one here. And if it gets in your eye, it burns like the dickens. Of course, that's part of it. The other part, once you've done this, and you'll do this several times, come back with compressed air and blow these little ports out. Again, if you have a gasket anywhere, be careful not to lose it. Get that seat down in the center there that will actually blow out and you'll lose it so just just be gentle with it again if you wanted to you could actually take that out and hit it real hard get that back together so what we'll do is we're going to take our i'm going to call it a diaphragm gasket or o-ring assembly kind of match it up in place there. I'm 
once you got that down. Everything looks lined up. Go ahead and start your bowl screws back in. Ironically, while doing this, I live on the Texas coast. We have actually two storms in the Gulf of Mexico right now. One is about to cross Cuba. Another one is making a beeline towards the Texas, Louisiana coast. Marco and I don't remember the other one's name. It's a little further out though. All right. Let's get this carburetor back on the storm responder and that's another project we're working on. 2015 Terex 4. It's a bevel gear replacement. Motors inside the garage. You can search for that. It's a kind of an ongoing deal. It's going to take a little bit more time, but I had to get this generator going with the impending storms, plural, out there. All right. What we got to do first, we're going to hook these linkages up. They go right there in those two holes. That's your, for your uh, generator, excuse me, your governor linkages. I'm gonna set the phone down for just a second. Hopefully I can, hopefully you'll still be able to see what I'm doing. Get that set. I'm gonna go ahead and start one of the carburetor bolts. Get it screwed into the manifold. And at least held in place. I'm gonna pick the phone back up. Actually, you can see. Go ahead and tighten them by hand. Always make sure you get your bolts and screws if you can. Start it by hand before you put a wrench or ratchet to it. Come back with your 532nd, snug it. You don't have to bear down on it too hard. All right, once we got that in place, we're gonna do your air cleaner base. It's got a gasket on the backside, make sure it's still there, not torn or not missing. I'm gonna line it up. All right, and then go ahead and put your retaining nuts on. These are the 7 sixteenths, or these use a 7 sixteenths socket or wrench. All right, we got that. Now we have our fuel line. clamp back in place. All right, that's gonna be good enough. And get our air cleaner and cover back on. Actually, I'll show you something real quick. We need to put our, our choke lever back in place. And if you look inside here, there's your choke butterfly there, your valve. It's in a closed position. And on top, you see that hole's got a notch in it. That lever's got a little tab. So you just drop it in, 
choking is being a full closed when you pull it off so it should be there when you get ready to put it back in and then you can just actuate your lever there Cleaner back on. While we're doing this, I'm going to go ahead and turn the fuel valve back on, y'all. Start being gravity fed into that carburetor into the to the bowl and if it all is working well when the bowl starts filling up with fuel the float ought to rise and eventually cause the needle to contact the seat and shut the fuel supply down and of course when the engine's load demands more fuel and it pulls it from the from the carburetor the process will continue all right Got the sucker on, got it on choke. Let's hope it works. Please subscribe if you can.